shit ever. Yeah? This kid can fucking fake and flip a fucking street? Any of you can do that? No. Tyshawn Jones, 2018, Thrasher Magazine, Skater of the Motherfucking Year. Tyshawn, come on here. To me, his skateboarding translates every language, every culture, every religion, every denomination, every fucking creed, and everything. It crosses all boundaries. Like that shit is ill. That's the best shit. It's just like Jordan fucking dunking from the fucking three point line. I don't care if you have a fucking touch the basketball. You're like, yep, that's that shit. And Tyshawn is that. He was born in Manhattan, New York, Mount Sinai Hospital, because I'm originally from Harlem, so I wasn't ready to give birth in New Jersey. So skating started from his brother. You know, he followed everything his older brother did, and so they must have been playing with the skateboarding games. Tony Hawk Pro Skater, like playing that and just like then having a skateboard and being like, can I do that on there or whatever? And then um, Brian just quit because Brian just got tired of falling. But TJ, Bruce, Scar, whatever. Cry, come home. Ma, rip my jeans. Ma, rip my shirt. He just kept on going. You'd think a kid be like, I'm done. But TJ just never quit. It just actually made him go on and on further. I feel like he got in skate because he just saw it, like, was curious about it and was just like, yo, look, do something different and just get out, like, just get out of the hood real quick, I guess, you know? You learn a lot from skating and, and it can keep you... <laughs> It can keep you out of trouble, and uh, or it can get you into trouble. I feel like skateboarding really, really, really impacted him and helped him get out of a life that he didn't want, obviously, but we were doing stupid shit as kids, stealing, running around, like fighting and shit, just doing it for fun, and skateboarding definitely helped us, like it made us a little bit more mature and just appreciate shit, you know? Growing up uptown in New York and him going downtown, you know, it's a far journey. And I think that's great because skating introduces you to all these different walks of life. He rode the train a lot, the six train or whatever. He'd be riding that all the time to come into downtown where the skate spots were. And you know, in the trains you see all kinds of stuff. You know, you see people that hate their job, you see some people that like their job and like have a book and are reading as they're going. So I think with every individual, how they interpret the city and how the city shapes them, you know, I mean, what he did in the city was fascinating because he's one of the best skaters, so. down the future's right here you don't forget because the little kids they pass by and you're paying no mind they're gonna come back 10 years later and eat you alive okay respect Tyshawn also grew up watching like Brian Herman and Reynolds and shit and he was like really into like America and Toy Machine I kind of had heard that Brian Herman was one of his favorites and Brian Herman's my favorite too so instantly I'm like he's got good taste you know <laughs> I mean if you look up to Brian Herman and you're Tyshawn then you you know some things about how to do tricks. At that time, Lizard King was his favorite. <laughs> Lizard King was his everything. So Lizard King this, Lizard King that. I remember going skate with Lizard King. When the photos came out, TJ was skating right next to Lizard King with thousands of people behind him. Like I know I'm getting older or whatever, and it's a trip for me to think that people grew up on me because people say that to me. Like their generation watched videos that I was in, which is so weird to me. He was in New York and he was doing crazy shit. 
And I remember being like, who the fuck is this little kid? Like, this kid is gnarly. You know, for a kid from the hood in the Bronx, like, to see him, you know, in this, like, Cali gear, it was amazing. You know, and he's this scrawny little kid, you know, toy machine flow, America. He's kind of not necessarily your ideal sort of supreme poster boy. He's just very raw, but he's still not grown up yet. He's like a child. I first saw Tyshawn skateboarding um, in New York at uh, 12th and A. Paul was there that day with his, his uh, Blackberry, and I said, hey, film him. I'd seen Tyshawn there, but that, just that Dave in particular, to me, him alling up, backside flip, to fucking, the, I wanted to look like that. You know, like I wanted to look, like, have that flick and shit that he had. And you could just tell early on. And that was like, oh man, this kid's sick. Like where the fuck did he learn how to do that? Like who did he see do that even? We were put together um, to make a video for a commercial for Supreme. One of those days, I think it was the second day, he nollie flipped into the courthouse, which was like a super big deal. Like, here I am watching a 13-year-old kid nollie flip into it. And then that shit came from there and just like built from like, from that, like up, like knock and sage and then boom, like back to back to back to back. I was like, wow, I have a group of kids that no one knows about. And all of a sudden, it's just like the energy there, you got to film it. And, and you know, Bill's got that with those kids, you know? So um, every kid wants to go with their friends and create a little crew and make a video and skate together. So you relate to it. You're like, that's what we do. I think why Cherry was so imp impactful was because what Bill saw in each of them. But then his relationship with Tyshawn was above and beyond any other relationship, above and beyond the relationship I ever fucking had with him filming. You're the courthouse kid. You know it. How old are you? 13. After Cherry, I got his contact. And um, the first conversation, like after a minute or so, he just told me what he wants, what he thinks he should get, and came with a full proposal and kind of like, I know my market value, no brand wants to pay me what I should get paid, stuff like that, and totally blew me away. Tyshawn, what is that? 650 BMW, nigga, that's me in two years. Or a year. It depends, you know how to break, keep how you scaling up kids, to the right? top. Look at all these little kids When you fuck with board. Adidas, this is what you get, man. <laughs> then um, we had this trip out to London, and they're like, hey, can you buy me this head-to-toe um, Adidas track suit that everybody wears? And, and then they were like, we want to announce it on our social media. And I was kind of like, oh, it's, there's no contract, we're not ready. But they were so excited. Them getting those outfits and posting each other, like announcing them on Adidas was pretty cool. And you know, it was not like a brand strategy type of post. It was like them just being themselves. That's like my out of town roommate. And we just be everywhere, right? Like, cause we room together all the time on Cherry. Cherry was the first project. He was really kind of like, showed the world who he is. But then Away This was the first project that he filmed and was focusing on his own video part. Watching Tyshawn is amazing. I mean, like, he's doing things on a skateboard. That's like, oh yeah, he in his own lane. He's doing that shit, so. And that shit is tight to see, because that shit hyped me up. Hey. Yes, the power of a solid outfit. A kit, as I used to like to call it. If your kit is solid, then your day is gonna be on point, you know? You walk out, you feel a little more confident. You might say hi to a girl you might not have said hi to before. So if you got something ill on and you're feeling good about yourself and you're rolling down the street, it's like your pop's just a little bit higher, your, your confidence level's just a little bit stronger. You're gonna wanna probably film a trick that day. Like if you got something ill on that you like and you're like, man, I got some new kit that I'm rocking, like 
that flyness that you feel in that moment is gonna end up in a video and the world's gonna see how fly you feel in that, in that kit. Yeah, I mean, Love Park is probably one of the dirtiest places on this earth almost, you know? <laughs> and to go there with that all white overall kit and, and try to hit the Love Park gap, I mean, that's, that's next level. Putting out a good video part is, to me, that's your, that's your album, you know? That's your, like, Neil Young, Harvest Moon album. That's your Biggie, Ready to Die. That's like, what everybody's gonna remember you for, you know, to me. It's like a beautiful bravado of, I was made to do this, this is why I'm here. And of course all these people are gonna clap. But to see that and to see him and see his smile and that shit is, is golden, you know what I mean? It's like, this isn't shit that comes easy. This is shit that he really, really worked hard to get because he wants to be that. He wants to be chart topping, you know what I mean? He wants to be the dude and, and all that shit was a lot of work. Every single trick in Blessed was out every day, out every day, out every day, like, you know what I mean? Like, never being lazy. It's a huge deal for him. I mean, he worked his ass off on that Supreme video and it's awesome that, that you know, a, a kid from, from his background could suddenly become the most celebrated skater that year. Like, that's incredible. And that's exactly what Tyshawn did that year. And Tyshawn being named Skater of the Year, not even just Skater of the Year, but Jake Phelps' last choice for Skater of the Year. Rest in peace, Jake Phelps. He was always like that dude that knew everything about every skater, no matter who you were. He like knew what was up and he gave Tyshawn that crown. It's the skate community that is voting upon it. And it's usually the most cynical skaters are the ones that are choosing. That was what was cool is like most of his footage, a lot of that stuff's all East Coast and New York and kind of not what you typically see in those people, you know, I guess, in, the, in previous sodies. You know, it was something he was, he was striving for. He, that's something he wanted to attain. He's out to chase those things down and attain them. And that was one of them. I think the moment when he got the trophy and Jake handed it over to him and then just the emotions, there you can tell like how much it means to him and how much he works because he doesn't show his emotions too often. I'm going to invite everybody who I feel like rose for me and helped me get here because I didn't get here alone. So I need everybody to come on the stage right now. Okay, Bill, my mom, my grandma, my girl. It was just something really that I felt like all the stars were aligning to do something bigger than just, hey, you skate good, here's a shoe. It's like, no, it's like, you skate good, you're in the coolest city in the world, you look cool, you're connected to all the right people. There was like such an aura around him that was the, why he was like an obvious like person to introduce professional skate footwear to. I love when skaters are actually hands-on with the de development of their product, but another skateboarder that's actual in-house designer like Scott Johnson is working hands-on with Tyshawn to create the final product. Like it could be in New York, it can be basketball inspired. If we think about it, skateboarding shoes came from basketball silhouettes. When I was young, we were buying all sorts of old, old school basketball shoes. At the end of the day, shoes are just shoes. I mean, a Jordan is just a Jordan. Uh, you know, a sky top is just a sky top. <laughs> Taishan shoe is just Taishan shoe until there's that person behind it. There's something more to it and it's powerful. Welcome everybody to celebrate the lifetime achievement of Taishan getting his own shoe. Because yeah. I came out to support my homie and I'm proud of him. I mean, 
inside, I was like, I can't believe a shoe that I designed is gonna be hand-painted at like stories high. And then to see something just kind of really come out at this level with like this much love and support, um, this has just been the most exciting thing for me. And that's for me, I can't even imagine for him. It's funny when I look at these mood boards now and I, I look, it's almost like his victory lap. Like he, he put out the shoe, had the part, and now he's just like off skating in the basketball court, just skating flat ground over trash cans again. I'm always envious of how he like easily, he like jumps over things and how he like dwarfs obstacles. Looks really fun just to like bounce over trash cans and stuff like that. He's gonna keep going. Like, you know, he's gonna go, whether it's skating, this or that, it's gonna lead to somewhere bigger than this. I mean, this is, this is just the high, you know? This is like, he's gonna keep going, like, you know what I mean? And He's a 20-year-old with a restaurant. Name one 20-year-old pro skater as a restaurant already. Tastes so good. I think you wanna slap your mama. It's crazy. The Caribbean and American restaurant Taste So Good opened in the Bronx last September. The cool thing about him with the restaurant in the Bronx and his family is like, he's not the dude who took the money and like left everyone behind. No, like his circle are all his homies. And that's a special thing. It's because you have to. You know, you see a need for something that nobody else is gonna do. So it gives you that drive to do it yourself. He's got Taste So Good, which is his restaurant. He's got a clothing line slash hardware company. Hardee's, it comes from the game, like two for flinching basically, but Hardee's. you say Hardee's. I forget who said it, but someone's like, yeah, we can do that, we can do that, like Hardee's hardware. And then TJ just ran with it. Just like a family. So when I see him doing all the other stuff he's doing, I'm like, that's what it's about, you know? That's what the point of all this other stuff was, so that we can fucking kill it and take over. He's a true inspiration and um, in particular, uh, you know, young black kids because they see like someone like TJ and they can relate. Next kid from the Bronx comes out and he's like, I want to be like TJ. Yeah, like I'm proud of this kid. Like to see him from like this to like that, it's just like he's not even like 21 yet and it's insane. For me, I'm a street skateboarder and street skateboarding is what made my career and I think is what's really an important part of our culture is street skateboarding. And as we lose a bit of that element of our culture, it's people like Tyshawn that come along and breathe life back into it and we make people remember how important that aspect of street skateboarding is. It's raw, it's real, it's the truth. And that's what Tyshawn represents. Yeah, I'ma put the city on my back, I'm a heavyweight. Rats coming out of the birdhouse, I got featherweight. We ain't stopping that red light, so enough to say FaceTime with my old G set, we up now. Bass coming in, gotta put him on the truck route. Slaving on the box, we ain't trying to the tough route. I'ma put the five on a nigga, he get twitched out. Uh, yeah, I'ma put the city on my back, I'm a heavyweight. Rats coming out of the birdhouse, I got featherweight. We ain't stopping that red light, so enough to say FaceTime with my old G set, we up now. Bass coming in, gotta put him on the truck route. Slaving on the box, we ain't trying to the tough route. I'ma put the five on a nigga, he get twitched out.